was eager to lose my American culture. I accentuated my A's and my O's, and I didn't correct people when they assumed that I was Canadian. In fact, I picked one of their flag patches on my backpack after noticing how much nicer people were in Australia to Canadians than they were to Americans. I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed by the Americans I saw. Their certainty that anything different is wrong. The destruction they brought to any place they wanted to party, their loudness, their assumptions, the association that we had with George Bush all the time, just so many more things. I've been especially excited to spend a week in Japan at the end of my travels. I was going there for a final test for a Japanese culture class I was taking while living in Australia. We had a week to complete a scavenger hunt list of goals for our grades, proving that we understood Japanese culture. During the day, we were touring businesses and practicing our bows and the ritual of exchanging business cards. And um, during the night, we were doing business dinners. And we took trips to major tourist destinations where we got points for bartering for prices in Japanese. At night, I was getting a different kind of education. As I ventured out with two of the guys from my class who were both fluent in Japanese because they had lived there for a long part of their life. One of them was a blonde-haired, blue-eyed bombshell of an Australian named Brett. The other one was a classmate of mine from Korea who had relatives in Japan and spent a lot of his summers there, named Kevin. He protected me all the time like he was my big brother. One of the things I loved so much was how safe I felt everywhere in Japan. On the third day, our trip was for our class to travel three hours by subway from Kyoto to Osaka. And one of my friends had forgotten her wallet at the payphone, and she didn't realize until six hours later. My teacher said, no problem. And she called the subway station where the security guard went to the payphone and picked up the wallet. Nobody had touched it. Nobody had taken out the $1,000 of cash she had just sitting inside of it. Japan is great, I thought to myself. And when I got to Osaka, I was in awe. It was a really modern city, and it had the lights and the billboards and the things that you see in movies. And we did our class stuff there in the afternoon, and Brett had been talking about these amazing fried octopus balls that you can get in Osaka. But the only time you can get them was in the middle of the night, and you had to buy them from trucks on the streets. I decided that I had to eat octopus balls while I was there. So when the rest of my class was getting ready to travel back, I announced that I was going to stay. And my teacher said she was okay with that if Brett and Kevin would stay with me. And then she said she would give me bonus points on my scavenger hunt if I could actually navigate the subway system and all the transfers back to our hotel in Kyoto before sunrise when we took off the next morning. I couldn't use those guys for any help though because they could actually read Japanese and would know if we were going wrong. So they promised not to do anything while I took us home. Much later that night, we were ready to go back to our hotel. The subways were shockingly clean looking and miraculously smelled great in the middle of the night. And I was ready to navigate all the transfers back. I was doing really well. We were almost back to Kyoto. Our train was empty and everybody could sort of hear your conversations, but there's enough people just sort of standing around to make it feel like we weren't in a deserted car. And I was exhausted. As I noticed, a man stumbling through the car though. He was clearly drunk. He was easily, easily the oldest passenger on the train. He was walking up to people and getting in their faces. And nobody said anything. They just looked down. And eventually his eyes set on me. And he started pointing at me. And I couldn't understand all of what he was saying. But I did catch the same term that a num number of young school children used when they first saw me. He was saying, white girl, white girl, but he was leering at me. And he kept repeating it as he stumbled towards us. Brett pushed me behind him and Kevin. But as the man got closer, they too just stepped out of the way. And silently stared at the ground without putting up any fight. And I didn't know what had just happened. The two protectors stepped to one side of the car, and the man's hand was open and flexing as he was reaching towards my chest, wanting to grab it. And, and he was small and somewhat harmless seeming. So at first, I just sort of laughed and I said, um, "Ia, Ia, Ia, Ia," and I tried to push him away. And and this did not slow him down. And all I could think was that in my mind, I couldn't think of my Japanese fast enough. And and was I really saying no, or was I? it too properly so he didn't understand what I meant because that would have been a problem and had I lost my mind was I really saying yes why wasn't he stopping and his hands were touching me everywhere now and nobody 
helping me. And I looked around saying, help, somebody just help me. And everyone just looked away. And all of a sudden, his tongue was just coming towards my face. And I thought, oh, hell no. <laughs> and I reached out and I put my hand over his face and I pushed it away from me. He was short enough where he couldn't reach me. So he sat there just <laughs> licking my hands and crying out at me. And I looked around saying my Japanese word for I need help. I need help. And nobody would make eye contact. The train was finally slowing down enough where we came to a stop. And I just pushed him as he stumbled over and I jumped out of the car. Brett and Kevin barely made it out behind me. What the hell, you guys? I was shaking and I was yelling and my echoes were just drifting through the entire empty train station. And they stood there looking at me and I just went on, what is wrong with you? Why didn't you keep that pervert off of me? And Kevin finally spoke up and said, I'm sorry. We couldn't. What do you mean you couldn't? And he went on and he said, well, that man was our elder. He was the oldest man on that train. We have to respect our elders. It was very rude what you did to him. <laughs> I, I was floored. Everything that I had once loved about Japanese culture, the manners, the systems, the respect just came crashing down on me. This was a giant loophole. A loophole that made me miss America. <laughs> the next day I grabbed my backpack with a Canadian flag, wore my Australian college t-shirt, I learned how to do a formal tea ceremony to close a business deal in Japan. But I also bought an American flag. I folded it up and I tucked it in my pocket. Carrying all these things with me. Searching for where I truly felt at home in the world. 